So we've come outside to see one of the Shannon lifeboats on the water. She's a brand new boat. Let's take a look. Let's go. So Dan, you mentioned earlier that she's a small, fast, all-weather lifeboat. Yeah. What does that actually mean? What does all-weather mean? Um, as I said, she's, yeah, she is the smallest all-weather lifeboat we've got, and at 18 tonnes, um, she's uh, fairly small in comparison to the displacement of all of our other lifeboats. The real benefit of that is because she, she is, is that she is incredibly nimble um, and is able to, to cope with a beach launch and recovery system really well. One of the critical things is the fact that she's got water jets, which means that she's got a completely clean bottom, so that when we do beach her, there's no uh, propellers or rudders to actually foul on the actual sand or rocks or wherever, wherever we're landing which means that from a maintenance point of view, it's really easy to maintain it. So all weather means effectively all weather. This boat can go out in all weathers when other people are coming in and we're not able to send our inshore lifeboats out. These boats are the ones that are going out into the really, really snotty weather and carrying out rescues. So being so small and so nimble, what does that actually mean in, in a rescue situation? Um, the fact that she's water jet driven and she's a lot smaller means that she's incredibly manoeuvrable. So when it comes to tight, close quarter situations alongside boats or on rocky coastlines, the crews are able to put her in exactly the right position because of the manoeuvrability that the water jets give us. She's obviously incredibly fast as well. 25 knots is the, the published speed. She's actually capable of slightly more than that, which means that crews have everything they need to carry out effective rescues. So you're mentioning crew quite a lot. Presumably yeah. they have to have special training to drive the Shannon? Absolutely. The, um, the crews are all specifically trained on this class of boat. When the crew gets this boat, they're going to spend a week doing a, week doing a full, full training course. They take the boat away. From up here, the crew are able to, um, to get a really good view from all around to make sure that they uh, have a good, good visibility. Whenever they're carrying out a rescue, the, the coxswain or helmsman has, has the ability to get a good full spatial awareness of what's going on around the boat. The full control system is up here on the boat and they're able to see all of the systems information in one, one location and they've got full control of all the systems. So if she's going out in, in pretty bad weather, it yes. seems like a silly question, but do the crew get wet up there? They do get wet. The, um, when you're actually on sort of passage to a, um, a shout, you'd be positioned inside the boat. But during any kind of close quarters manoeuvring, or if you're alongside a, a vessel, the, the helmsman will be up in this position so he can command the view that he needs to. So you can drive it from inside and up there? Correct, yes. OK, real. So this is the, um, the wheelhouse. Position here for six crew in um, six seats. Um, five seats have access to what we call the Systems Information Management System, or SIMS. Um, the beauty of the system is that the crews are able to get up all of the information that, uh, that they need to carry out their rescues from one, one screen. This is the nav position, they're able to get charts up, radar, VHF, and they call through their headsets, even down to the CCTV pictures from within the boat, and then all the way down to um, pan tilt zoom, zoom camera which is which can be viewed and moved around around the boat. We can take 17 survivors and, and still maintain the self-writing capability of the boat um, but we've actually able to fit 72 people on board if we really needed to. One of the things that, that is the primary design objective of all of our boats really is to keep our crews safe. Um, absolutely essential to that is this crew seat. It's fully suspension so that it bounces up and down and, and absorbs all the shocks that the rough weather gives the crew. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic bit of kit and really helps keep them safe and injury free when they're going out in really rough weather. Um, so after you've rescued someone or more than one person, yeah. depending on what state they're in, where do you put them? Um, so if they're, if they're perfectly fit and able, the crew um, position them down into the survivor space, which we'll, we'll go down to in a minute. Um, if there's someone who is unfortunately not very well, we have the ability to set up a stretcher in the wheelhouse and that then allows the doctor who's positioned in the seat here without a screen to actually maintain uh, an idea on their, their condition and their well-being. Um, one of the other interesting things is there's no, there's no, there's no wheel when we um, in the helm position. The boat is entirely controlled by joystick, lay, lever, left to right. Um, the other odd thing is because she's water jet driven, we have two sets of what look like throttles. Um, one of them is actually engine revolutions, which is the right hand um, throttle. And these sets of what looks like throttles are actually the bucket controls for the water jets. As um, it's two methods of control really, to control your thrust forward. The bucket 
the same as a, as a jet ski really, allows, allows the water to be directed from the, the jet that comes out the back of the boat and directed forward to give you reverse and that combined with throttle response enables the crew to give, give really good manoeuvrability so by any mixture of combinations of this steering set, uh, mechanism the, the um, lifeboat can actually be moved in any different Here. It isn't for the crew, it's for the people you've rescued. It is, yeah. This is the survivor space. We've got six seats for um, survivors and um, they can obviously get strapped in to make sure that they're safe on the passage home. Um, it's also used to store a lot of the electrical equipment. One of the other interesting things is that all of the spaces are protected by fully watertight doors. These doors are dug down and seal to maintain a watertight integrity of all of the spaces. So we're able to completely seal off every, every space to prevent any water, if there was any water ingress due to an accident or a grounding, to basically maintain the watertight integrity of the boat. So this space is the fuel tank space, which is just positioned behind the survivor space and underneath the main wheelhouse. She has two fuel tanks, both um, with a 1,200 litre capacity. These are also 2,400 litres total, and that gives us 250 nautical miles range and 10 hours at full power. Moving back from the tank space, we've got the engine room where you've got the two Scania D13 engines delivering 650 horsepower each to the Hamilton 364 water jets, which are positioned into the jet space just behind the engine room.